ओके हेलो एवरी वन एज वी आर सीन इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियो अबाउट फ्रीली फॉलोइंग बॉडी सो नाउ लेट एस स्टडी अबाउट अ बॉडी प्रोजेक्टेड वर्टिकली अपवर्ड्स सो लेट एस स्टार्ट आर क्लास विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए डायग्राम सो से दैट अ पार्टिकल इज प्रेजेंट ऑन ए ग्राउंड लेट मी सपोज अ बॉडी डन सो इट इज बीन प्रोजेक्टेड वर्टिकली अपवर्ड डन so as it is said that it is projected vertically upwards so say that it is said to be having some whatever we say that initial velocity and say that it is u okay done so now as it is thrown or projected vertically upward and we learn that after reaching particular height what will happen momentarily the object is, will be at rest means it stops and then starts falling from there back to the ground that comes under freely falling case so therefore what we can say here the final velocity of the particle is considered to be zero and the height at which the final velocity of the particle is zero is called as maximum height reached or you can say maximum height covered by the particle and denoted by h max and denoted by h max straight away so as i said that as it is moving vertically upward we said that just now its final velocity became zero because it is getting slowed down so what do you mean by getting slowed down so nothing but its velocity is gradually decreasing so as velocity is decreasing what we say then change in velocity is negative so therefore acceleration possessed by it is due to gravitational pull of earth and that is nothing but your acceleration due to gravity as change in velocity is negative so acceleration is also negative so a is equals to minus g so then as it is moving upward so therefore in a time t in a time t let me suppose some time t so the velocity gained by the particle b given by v okay and at the same time height covered by the particle b some height h so you can ask me what is the difference between final velocity v equal to zero and what is this v here so this v is velocity gained in a time t and h is height covered in a time t whereas this final velocity v equal to zero is in a time t is equals to that is time of ascent and this height covered in a time equal to time of ascent is given by h max so as the time is equals to time of ascent and that at time t equal to time of ascent the height covered is maximum height and the velocity final velocity attained at time of ascent will be its zero and for velocity attained at a time t can be calculated and a height covered in a time t can also be calculated so let us learn about all these things in detail slowly okay so what are the conditions we are having now here in this case so the initial velocity straight away we have seen just now the initial velocity of the particle is considered as u and final velocity so we are saying final velocity right so it you can say at any time t okay final velocity at any time t or at a time t can be given by v straight away and height covered okay so height covered by the particle b sum h or you can say h capital h is given by h max right given to h max so therefore for our convenience let us say this one as small h and then acceleration is given by what acceleration due to gravity and that is given minus g and therefore thus time taken is considered as t time taken is considered as t so now let us write all as we said that this acceleration Uh, due to gravity is uniform right and we observe that at a place it is constant so it is also a uniform accelerated motion so therefore it also contains some or we can explain this motion of this body using equations of motion straight away so let us see the equations of motion for a body projected vertically upwards so what is the first equation v is equals to u plus at so substituting our given conclusions whatever we have then it will be v is equals to u minus g t straight away v is equals to u minus g t and what is the second one we are having s is equals to u t plus 
half a t square. So what is this v is equal to u minus g t velocity of the particle gained in a time t. And what is this s is equal to u t plus half a t square that is displacement, right? So what I can say now height covered by a particle in a time t that is h is equal to u t minus half g t square since a is minus g. So this whole expression turned to be minus half g t square straight away. And the third expression or equation we are having is v square minus u square is equals to 2 a s just substituting the terms there v square minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h as s is displacement here it is height covered h and a is acceleration here it is acceleration due to gravity that is minus g and what is the fourth one we are having displacement covered in nth second s n is equal to u plus a into n minus 1 by 2 from this what we can say h n is equals to u minus g into n minus 1 by 2 so where this is the height covered by the particle during the i mean like during mm, movement projected vertically upwards in the last second that is nth second we can say height covered is given by hn is equal to u minus g into n minus 1 by 2. So these are our equations of motion. We can study the motion of this particle projected vertically upward using these equations. And now we are having some uh, particular uh, exceptions or uh, terms or derivations whatever we say. So let us learn one by one now. What are they? The first one is time of ascent. The first one is time of ascent. So in our previous case in freely falling what we learned time of descent what is time of descent time taken to time taken by the body to reach ground from a height h right so here time of ascent is quite opposite right so what i can say time of ascent directly the time taken by the particle to reach the maximum height from the ground is called as time of ascent so time taken by body okay so time taken by body to reach maximum height time taken by body to reach maximum height from ground time taken by body to reach a maximum height from ground from ground is called as a, what we call time of ascent so let us uh, derive the expression for a time of ascent straight away so therefore here what is the given time is nothing but time of ascent and what is its initial velocity u only so therefore at maximum height at a maximum height what just we considered that the object is going to be at momentarily rest so therefore its final velocity will be zero and what is acceleration acceleration due to gravity that is minus g so therefore from first equation of motion straight away so from first equation of motion what is the first equation of motion here in body projected vertically upwards that is v is equals to u minus gt so therefore zero is equals to u minus g into time taken is time of ascent so sending this gta towards this side it returns positive which will be u and thus time of ascent is given by u upon g so that is initial velocity by acceleration due to gravity so from this what we can say time of ascent is directly proportional to initial velocity of the projection of a particular object with which it is projected vertically upward. So this is for your time of ascent and now what we are having the next expression need to be calculated is maximum height reached or height covered right. Let us see that one also. So maximum height expression for maximum height. So this is the maximum or the what sort of the height which it can cover before its final velocity is getting to be zero as that is only the condition. So let us see the derivation part here straight away. So at h maximum at h maximum what we say final velocity of the object is zero. So therefore from third equation of motion for body projected vertically upward from third equation of motion for body projected vertically upward as we have seen here directly see this one we can take the help of this expression see then we will get it as v square minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h and here in this case what is height h 
we define it as called h maximum that is maximum height order whatever it is uh, reached by the body projected vertically upward and we observed at h maximum v is zero final velocity so minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h maximum so therefore it is turned to be minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h max so thus you can just cancel minus and minus on either side so we get the expression for h max is equals to straight away u square by 2 g so where u is again the initial velocity of projection of the particle thrown vertically upward so from this what we can just consider h max is directly proportional to a square of initial velocity h max is directly proportional to square of initial velocity and uh, while learning this con topic what we just learned here is after reaching the maximum height after reaching the maximum height the particle will start falling down right so therefore let us see once again the time of descent derivation here so td so in our previous video freely falling case we just learned time of descent as root over 2 h upon g so here what we considered h it is a height from which it is been dropped so now if you consider in this case see here a body projected vertically upward what happened the body reached this particular maximum height over here and it became momentarily at rest and then started falling down right so therefore in the case of freely falling here the h is considered to be h maximum for us in this case so therefore h is equals to straight away h maximum and this h maximum is given by u square by 2g so substitute in this one so we get time of descent is equal to root over 2 into u square by 2g whole upon g so 2 get cancelled and g comes to the denominator to turn it to be u square by g square as under root it is so one of the thing will come outside so time of descent is equals to root over u by g whole square which will be given as time of descent is equals to u upon g so if you observe here time of ascent is also u by g and time of descent is also u by g so thus for a given body time of descent directly proportional to initial velocity and for a given body time of ascent and time of descent both are equal when it is being projected straight away upward so this is a important condition you need to remember and now the fourth expression or whatever the new expression we will learn is time of flight what is that time of flight so as the body is projected vertically upward it reaches the maximum height straight away and it reach at it will be at momentarily at rest at that maximum height and then starts falling down right straight away so therefore time of flight is defined as the total time taken by the body to remain in air so time taken by body to remain in air is called as time of flight so time taken by body to remain in air completely to remain in air is called as your time of flight and this time of flight is denoted by capital T so from our understanding here in this we just learned that time of flight is equals to the time taken by the body to reach to the maximum height and then the time taken by the body to fall from that maximum height so therefore it is sum of time of ascent and time of descent is combinedly called as time of flight so therefore t is equals to u upon g plus u upon g so therefore time of flight is given by 2u upon g so from this also you can just say simply that time of flight is directly proportional to initial velocity so time of flight is also directly proportional to initial velocity so this is what time of flight condition we are considering about and the last expression to be solved in this freely i mean sorry body projected vertically upward is velocity of projection so why we are learning separately for this one is 
see uh, sometimes we'll be having some cases that we need to throw an object to some certain height h only so to reach that height h we require some velocity clearly over there and to know what is that particular velocity u so that if it is thrown with particular velocity u it reaches only a desired height h so therefore that one we are going to calculate that is velocity of projection straight away so say that this is u and you have to reach at a desired height h so after reaching the desired height h its velocity will be straight away zero so therefore say the third equation of motion so v square minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h so therefore zero square minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h and thus minus u square is equals to minus 2 g h and minus minus get cancel from which you will get u is equals to root 2 g h so velocity of projection of a particle to reach our height h is same as that of velocity of the body gained i mean velocity gained by the body just before touching the ground in a freely falling case so hope you all understood everything about this topic if any more doubts please post in a comment section thank you